Um, so, good morning. Let us start our lecture today. Um, so last time, I guess, uh, Katie um, were, uh, finished at the point where she tried to do derivative, right? Um, so let us um, do derivative today. Um, so um, you have a, a Laplace transform, which is integral from 0 to infinity of e to power minus s f t dt. And now what you do, what you want is that uh, you want to take the derivative of this guy. All right? To take the derivative of this guy, you're going to have to take the derivative um, in s of this interval. Right? So you have right, the derivative in s of this is equal to the derivative in s of the whole interval. All right, um, uh, let's find again. This is the Laplace transform of the function f. The Laplace transform of the function f is the integral from zero to infinity uh, of the product of the function f and exponential minus s dt, right? Um, now you want to do the derivative of this whole integral um, in s. What you do is that you have to do the integral uh, with respect to the function of s only. Right, so what you do is that, okay, you're gonna take the derivative of e to the power minus ts only. You're gonna take the derivative of e to the power minus ts and you multiply that with ft and you take the integral, right? So here I'm going from the derivative of an integral to um, derivative of a function inside an integral. But this is allowed because in the whole integral, the only um, function that depends on s is exponential minus st, right? So, but now you know that e to power minus st prime will be um, minus t e to power minus st, all right? This is the derivative with respect to s. This is why the derivative of e to power minus st prime will be minus t e to power minus st. Now I'm gonna plug this into this integral and I obtain the derivative will be the integral from zero to infinity of minus t e to the power minus t s f t dt. All right? Right? So, in a, so I explain again. I'm gonna, um, I want to do, take the derivative in s of the Laplace transform. What I do is I take derivative with respect to um, e to the power mi minus st in s. This derivative is minus t e to the power minus st, so this becomes minus t e to the power minus st, right? And now, because t doesn't, um, right? Right, and um, so, so this will give you the Laplace transform integral from zero to infinity of e to the power minus sc minus ft t dt, right? So what I do is I put um, um, e to the power um, minus, minus sc outside and uh, I, I'm gonna put a minus c and a minus f all together, all right? But there's a minus here, I can put it outside. So the minus is going um, outside. So what? Uh, what is the expression that I just obtained here? Yes. It's um, negative uh, one times the Laplace transform of the function where f t is t times f t. Yes. Can you sign the back of paper, please? So this quantity is nothing but the Laplace transform of t f t. Right. So the formula that we obtain here will be um, f prime of s uh, is um, the Laplace transform of a function f t prime, right? So we have the Laplace transform of a function f t prime will be minus Laplace transform of t f t. All right. 
So from the above computation, we can see that if uh, you want to take the derivative of a Laplace transform of uh, a function f t, you can take minus the Laplace transform of t times that function, right? And this is the formula that you can use. And the idea of proof is sim very simple. You take the derivative of exponential minus s t, that gives you minus t, right? And this minus t explain that why here you have minus t, right? So when you take the derivative in s of exponential minus s t, you get this minus t, and this minus t goes here and here, all right? Right, so now let us uh, try to do one ex exercise. We're gonna have to compute a Laplace transform of t to the power n, and we know that um, compute the Laplace transform of uh, t to the power n um, given the Laplace transform of the function one is one over s. All right? Now, uh, in this uh, example, you have to compute the Laplace transform of the t to the power n, but I give you in advance um, uh, the La La Laplace transform of one. So who can guess how can we do it? Yes? Uh, well, we consider, we can consider one to be t to the zero, because that's one. And so then we can use the fact that the Laplace transform of t to the one will be equal to um, negative times the derivative of the Laplace transform of t to the zero. Yes, can you sign the microphone, paper, please? Right, so we're going we're gonna to use this formula repeatedly, right? So we have the, lap, the derivative of the Laplace transform um, is minus um, um, Laplace transform of t times one, and this is minus Laplace transform of t, right? So we got, we use this formula in which f is one, right? We use this formula uh, uh, for uh, f t to be one. Now, when I, I use this formula to, for f t to be one, this derivative will be minus the Laplace transform of t times the function one. And this is minus the Laplace transform of t, right? So this derivative is what? Yes? Uh, well, the derivative of one over s would be negative one over s, and then we multiply by, uh, sorry, negative one over s squared, and then we multiply it by negative can you say it back the paper, please? Right? So, so this derivative will be the derivative of 1 over s, and this gives you Laplace, minus Laplace transform of t, and so this is minus 1 over s squared, give you the Laplace transform of t, so Laplace transform of t will be 1 over s squared. Right? I explain again. Uh, I apply this formula. Right, so the derivative of a Laplace transform will be minus uh, the Laplace transform t times the function. All right, so uh, in this case, um, the derivative of the Laplace transform of function one will be minus the Laplace transform of t times one, which is minus the Laplace transform of t. But you know that the Laplace transform of the function one is one over s. What you do is that you have to do the derivative of one over s, which is one over s squared which means that the Laplace transform of t is one over s squared, right? Now, uh, so how can I do Laplace transform of t squared? Yes? It would be the Laplace transform of um, t times t, which is the negative derivative. Yes, can you say it about your paper, please? So, this, you're gonna apply this formula again, 
this is the negative of the Laplace transform of T times T, and this is the Laplace transform of T times T, right? You use this formula again for the function ft, which is equal to t. Uh, so the Laplace transform of t squared will be minus Laplace transform of t times t, and this is Laplace transform of t prime, right? Um, so in this case, what is the Laplace transform of t prime? So this gives you uh, the derivative of 1 over s squared, um, and this is minus 2 over s cubed. All right? Now what is uh, the Laplace transform of t squared? use this formula for ft to be t, right? ft to be t. I'm going to use this formula for ft to be t. So the Laplace transform of t prime <laughs> will be t times ft, right? With a minus. So minus the Laplace transform of t squared will be the Laplace transform of t prime. And this guy is 1 over s squared prime. Uh, 1 over s squared prime is minus 2 s cubed. So the Laplace transform t squared will, will be 2 over the uh, um, s uh, cubed. Questions? It's good? Right. Now I want to compute Laplace transform of t cubed. What is it? Expand how you compute that? Yes. Can you say the back of paper, please? Uh, so now the Laplace transform of t cubed will be my, uh, minus, uh, minus t times t cubed squared, right? Right? So t cubed is times t squared. So in this case, you can use this formula for ft to be t squared. So this gives you Laplace transform of t squared prime, and this gives you 2 over s cubed prime, which is minus 6 over t4, um, s4. So the Laplace transform of t cubed will be 6 over s4. All right? So basically, if you continue this um, business, you arrive at um, Laplace transform of tn will be n factorial over n, over n plus 1. All right? Questions? I explain again. Um, to compute the Laplace transform of t squared, you're going to take the derivative of Laplace transform of t. And to compute the Laplace transform of t cubed, you're going to take the derivative of the Laplace transform of t squared. Right? So you repeat this argument, and then the Laplace transform of t to power n will be n factorial over s um, over s uh, uh, s um, power n plus 1. Which is it's good. Right. So let us go um, to another exercise. Um, we have to compute the Laplace transform of B to the AT. Uh, um, compute given uh, the Laplace transform of B to the AT is 1 over S minus A. Now, I have to compute the uh, Laplace transform of t uh, e to the a t, right? 
But I know in France that the Laplace transform of E to the IT um, is a one of S minus F. How can we compute that? Yes? Well, we know that the uh, derivative of the Laplace transform of E to the AT will be equal to negative the Laplace transform of T times E to the AT. Yes, can you stand the back of paper, please? All right, so now we're going to apply this formula for FT to be E to the AT, right? Apply the formula. Uh, Ft to be e to the at. So the Laplace transform of e to the at prime will be minus the Laplace transform of t e to the at. All right. I'm gonna apply this formula for Ft to be e to the at. Uh, so the Laplace transform of e to the at prime is minus the uh, Laplace transform of t is to the at, right? Um, so, so what is the derivative of the Laplace transform of e to the at? Yes? Over uh, s minus a squared. Yes, can you sign the back of paper, please? So this guy is one over s minus a prime and is equal to the Laplace transform of e to the at, and this guy is minus s to the power s minus a squared. All right. I explain again. Uh, in this case, I have the, the Laplace transform of e to the at prime will be minus the Laplace transform of t a uh, e to the at. All right, um, so this is one over s minus i prime, and this is equal to minus the Laplace transform of e, um, t e to the it. So one over s minus i prime will be minus um, one uh, over s minus i square, and this is also equal to minus l t e to the it. So now what is the Laplace transform of t e to the it? Yes? Can you send the back of paper, please? So in this case, you're going to have the Laplace transform of t e to the at will be 1 over s minus a squared. All right? Purchase? Um, so I explain again. In this example, I have to compute the Laplace transform of e to the at. All right? Um, I, I apply the, the formula for ft to be e to the at. Which means that the Laplace transform of Ft prime will be t minus t, the Laplace transform of t times Ft. In this case, Ft is, uh, is e to the it, right? Um, but this prime will be minus 1 over s minus a squared. So the Laplace transform of e to the it will be 1 over s minus a squared. Watch this. It's good. Right, so uh, let us consider another example. So example, you have one. Um, compute the Laplace transform of T sinus of Vt given the Laplace transform of sine Vt is V over S squared plus T squared. Can I compute this uh, the, t, uh, the 
La plage en son petit sein de ce qu'il Yes? Yes, can you sign the back of the paper, please? So, applying the formula. Um, so now you're going to have the T times sinus of BT, um, a sinus of BT, from UB minus Laplace transform of T times sinus of BT. Right? Now you uh, have to apply the formula for FT to be sinus of BT, which means that the Laplace transform of sinus BT prime will be minus the Laplace transform of T times sinus of BT. Right? Which means that here I have B over N squared plus B squared prime will be minus the Laplace transform of T sinus of BT. All right. So what is the uh, derivative of this guy? Yes? Uh, well, we can use the chain rule. So you start by taking the negative 1 of the long term, so you multiply the whole thing by negative 1. And then it will be s squared plus b squared um, to the negative 2. And then you take the derivative of the b denominator, and you get 2s. So the whole thing will be. Um, my, uh, the whole thing will be minus 2 times b times s over s squared plus b squared uh, to the 2. Yes, can you sign the back of my process? So basically, this is, uh, this you want to use the chain rule, right? So this derivative will give you minus s squared plus b squared squared. This is derivative of 1 over x, right? So derivative of 1 over x is minus 1 over x squared, but you have to multiply with s squared plus b squared prime, so you still have a b, and so this gives you minus b times 2s over s squared plus b squared squared, right? All right, so the, the chain rule is the following. So the derivative of fg of s prime will be f prime of gs times g prime of s, so in this case, f, um, um, f of x will be 1 over x. So f prime of x will be minus 1 over x squared, right? And g of s will be um, s squared plus b squared. Um, and um, so this gives you uh, g prime of s is 2s, right? So here you use the chain rule. Uh, f of gs prime will be f prime of gs times g prime of s, right? In this case, f of x is um, 1 over x, so the derivative of f prime of x is minus 1 over x squared. This is why here you have this guy, right? Uh, here I have a b, right? So here there should be a b, and there should be a b, right? So, uh, so because the derivative of b over x is minus b, of x squared, this is why you have minus b over s squared plus b squared squared. The second derivative that you have to do is the derivative with respect to s of the gs. The gs is s squared plus b squared, so this derivative gives you 2s, right? So finally, what you have is so what is the value of the Laplace transform of t times uh, uh, and S uh, sinus. Yes. Can you sign the back of paper, please? Right. So now what you have is minus b times S two S over b squared plus S squared squared is equal to minus Laplace transform of t sinus of t. Which means that the Laplace transform of t times sinus of bt will be 2bs over b squared plus b squared 
equals s squared squared. Right? Questions? So we have homework today, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, can you put the homework here, please? So, um, so the next uh, step, we're gonna learn how to do um, inverse Laplace transform. Right? Um, another example um, on inverse Laplace transform. Right? Um, all right. So, um, so in this case, you have M S is is uh, 3 over s squared minus 4. And what you have to do is to do the inverse Laplace transform of m. Right? So I remind you uh, one formula which is very important, which is uh, the following. Uh, the Laplace transform of C1, Ms plus C2, Gs will be C1, the inverse Laplace transform of Fs plus C2, the inverse Laplace transform of Gs. Right. <coughs> All right, so in this case, um, I have a, a function fs, which is um, 3 over s squared minus 4, and I want to do the Laplace transform of this function. Um, I recall you that uh, an inverse Laplace transform of C1f plus C2g will be C1, the inverse Laplace transform of f, plus C2, the inverse Laplace trans transform of g. Right? Uh, So, uh, any hints on how we can do this? Yes? We can back to the denominator and then use partial fractions that split it up into uh, or positive or some of the both 1 over s uh, as one. Yes, can you send a bind of paper, please? Right. So, this is a very good strategy. What you do is um, uh, that you try to write this uh, f under this form, right? So, we observe that s squared minus 4 is s minus 2 s plus 2, right? So we're going to split fs as a sum, right? So fs will be 3 over s squared minus 4, and this is 3 over s minus 2 s plus 2. And this is a times s minus 2 plus b times s plus 2. Right? Uh, first, we observe that s squared minus 4 is s minus 2 times s plus 2. All right? Um, so, what you do is that you're going to split fs as the sum. So you, you're going to write m as 3 over s minus 4, and this is 3 over s minus 2 plus, uh, times s plus 2. And you're going to split this at the sum of a over s minus 2 plus b over s plus 2. Right? So uh, uh, how can I find a and b? Yes? Can you send a bank of paper, please? 
So what you do is that here you can write this as a s plus two plus b s minus two, right? And then you have s minus two s plus two, right? So you write the right hand side as a times s plus two plus b times s minus two dividing by s minus two, minus two s plus two, and you you're gonna see that three is equal to this sum, right? So you have three is a s plus two plus b s minus two. Now we set f to be two. So when s is two, what is the value of a? Is two, right? So you're gonna have a three is a two plus two plus b two minus two. Right? So three is a two plus two plus b two minus two. This gives you zero. So you have three is four times a. So a is three over four. Right? I explain again. What you do is that uh, you wanna split s as the sum of a over s minus two plus b over s plus two. Uh, because you wanna, uh, you wanna uh, use this formula, right? Um, so when you write under this form, you have a s plus two plus b s minus two is equal to three, which is this equation. Now I said s to be two, so three will be a two plus two plus b times two minus two. This is zero, so you have three is four times a. A is then three over four. Now I want to find b. How can I find b? Yes? Yes, can you set back the paper, please? So now I'm going to set f to be minus 2, right? So 3 will be a minus 2 plus 2 plus b minus 2 minus 2. Um, to find b, I set s to be minus 2, right? So I'm going to have 3 is a minus 2 plus 2 plus b minus 2 minus 2. This is going to be 0. So you have 3 is minus 4b. And then b is minus 3 over 4. Uh, mm, uh, so you have ms now um, is a 3 over 4 over s minus 2 uh, minus 3 over 4 over s plus 2. After you compute a and b, you can write f s as 3 over 4 s minus 2 minus 3 over 4 s plus 2. Right. So, so what is the inverse Laplace transform of f s? Yes? Well, we know that the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus a is e to the at. And so we know that the inverse of this, because we can split up the terms and take the inverse of each term, we know it'll be 3 fourths mm -hmm. times uh, e to the 2t minus 3 fourths times e to the negative 2t. Yes, can you sign the micro please? So first, you want to have to use the formula uh, that we have from the beginning, right? So this is going to be the inverse Laplace transform of s minus 2. And this minus 3 over 4, the inverse Laplace transform of s plus, uh, no, sorry, one. 1 over s minus 2, and this 1 over s plus 2, right? After I, after I write fs to be 3 over 4 s minus 2 minus 3 over 4 s plus 2, the inverse Laplace transform of fs will be 3 over 4, the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 2 minus 3 over 4, the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 2, right? So what is the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 2? Yes? Yes, can you sign the back of paper, please? So the first one gives me 3 over 4 e to the 2t. What is the inverse Laplace transform of this guy? 1 over s plus 2. Yes? Can you sign the back of paper, please? So this gives you e to the minus 2t. So this is the final answer. 
All right? Questions? So the key here is that you're going to have to split the function into the sums of uh, functions that you know what an inverse uh, Laplace transform of those uh, guys. Questions? Right, so let us go to another example. So example, you want to find the inverse of the last transform of 2s plus 1 over s cubed minus 2s squared plus 2s. Right. In this case, the function fs will be 2 over uh, 2s plus 1 over s cubed minus 2s squared plus 2. Right? Now I want to factorize this guy. How can I factorize this guy? Right? So I have a function f s which is 2 over s plus 1 over s to the power 3 minus 2s squared plus 2s. I want to factorize s to the power 3 minus 2s to power 2 plus 2s. you see that uh, there's a common factor which is s, so we have s squared minus 3s plus 2. All right? So the first common factor is s, definitely, right? You, you, so you write s cubed minus 3s squared plus 2s, and this is s, s squared minus 3s plus 2. All right? Now you look into this polynomial, you find two numbers a and b, right? So find a and b such that a plus b is 3 and a times b is 2. What are those two numbers? 2 and 1. 2 and 1. Can you sign back the back of paper, please? So now you find, a, uh, you find that a is 1 and b is 2, right? Then you, you know that you can factorize this um, as s minus 1, s minus 2. Questions? I explain it again. So the first thing you do is that you try to factorize s cubed minus 3s squared plus um, 2s. The easiest common factor is s. So I have s, s squared minus 3s plus 2. Now I have to factorize this guy. I have to find two numbers such that a plus b is minus this guy, which is 3, and a times b is 2. Definitely there are 1 and 2, which means that you can factorize this as s minus 1, s minus 2. Right. Um, so the next step is that I'm going to split f s into sums uh, of, of, of functions that I know uh, their derivative, right? Uh, their uh, inverse Laplace transform. Uh, so how can I factorize that? Yes? Like a over s plus b over s minus 1 plus b over s minus 2. Yes, can you say the back of the of this? So, uh, we're going to split ms, right? So ms will be uh, 2s plus 1 over s cubed minus 3s plus square plus 2s. And this I want to write under the form of s, a over s plus b over s minus 1 plus c over s minus 2. Right? So the next step is uh, that I, 
have to uh, split Fs like A over S because B over S minus 1 plus C over S minus 2, right? So those are the, the factors that I found here. S, S minus 1 and S minus 2, right? Um, so then I have 2S plus 1 will be A times S minus 1, S minus 2. Uh, so let me 3S squared plus 2S plus B times S, S minus 2 plus C times S, S minus 1. S, S minus 1, S minus 2. Right? So the next step is that I gotta write the right hand side under the same form with the left hand side. So the right hand side is A, S minus one, S minus two over S, S minus one, S minus two, plus B, S, S minus two over S, S minus one, S minus two, plus C, S, S minus one, over S, S minus one, S minus two, right? Which mean that two S plus one will be equal to A, S minus one, S minus two plus B times S S minus two plus C times S S minus one. So now how can I find A B C? Mm. Yes? Can you distribute A B and C over the functions of S one to the two together so that you can know S one to the two S and not S one to the one? Yes. This is a very good one. Uh, can you send back the paper, please? But there's a shorter way. Um, yes? This is the simplest uh, way of doing this. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? So set S to be zero. So when N is zero, you have two times <laughs> zero plus one is equal to A times zero minus one, zero minus two, plus b times zero, zero minus two, plus c times zero, zero minus one, right? First, I set s to be zero. When s is zero, you have two times zero plus one is a times one, uh, zero minus one, zero minus two, plus b times zero, zero minus two, plus c times zero, zero minus one, right? So what is the value of a in this case? Yes? Yes, can you sign my paper, please? So this guy is zero, this guy is zero, so you have one is a times two, so a is one half, right? So the next step is to set s to be one. You have two times one times, uh, uh, two times one plus one is equal to a, one minus one, one minus two, plus b times one, one minus two, plus c times one, one minus one. Right. So the next step is to set S to be 1. Basically, you, you set S to be uh, 0, 1, and 2, right? So, you, um, so now I set S to be 1. What is the value of B? Yes? Yes? What is the value of B? So when I set S to be 1, this guy and this guy vanish, right? So the left over is B times minus 2, uh, minus B. So B in this case will be, um, so 3 will be minus B, and so B is minus 3. All right? It's clear? Yes? Yeah, is there a 0, 1, and 1 minus 3? So uh, here? Oh, okay. So, so, so when you set S to be one, you have A times one minus one, one minus two, right? So this is one minus one, one minus two. Uh, but the A and the C will go away. Uh, so the left over is the B. Right? So you have three is minus B and B is minus three. All right. So the last case, I have to set S to be two. <laughs> So when s is 2, you have 2 times 2 plus 1 is a times 1 minus 1, uh, 2 minus 1, 2 minus 2, 
plus b times 2 to minus 2 plus c times 2 to minus 1. Right? Um, so, yes? C is at root 2 here. Sorry? But c is at root 2 here. C is what? D2. It's at root c is at root 2 here. Right at 2. So, this is 0, so there's no b there, right? Right. So, so I C, and yes. then there would be no A as well. So There's I would, no say a. would C, then D2 gets. So D five halves. Sorry. Yeah, this five halves. Yes. Sorry. I just had a bag of play for this. <laughs> uh, so this is zero, right? So this is zero. Uh, so then you're going to have five is 2C. So C is five halves. So when you set S is 2, the A and the B goes away. The left over is C times 2 times two, uh, C times 2, 2 minus 1. So 5 is 2C, C is 5 over 2. So basically, you have 2S plus 1 over S cubed minus 3S squared plus 2S is going to be 1 half over S plus um, minus 3 over s minus 1 plus 5 half over s minus 3, right? At the final step, you, go, you put ABC into the formula. You have 2s plus 1 over s cubed minus 3s squared plus 2s is 1 over 1 half of over s minus 3 over s minus 1 plus 5 half over s minus 2, right? Now, the Laplace transform of this guy will be minus 3s squared plus 2s will be one half of the Laplace transform of uh, 1 over s minus 3 inverse Laplace transform of s minus 1 plus 5 over 2 the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 2 all right questions Again, after you put ABC into this uh, formula, you get uh, the inverse Laplace transform of FS will be one half the inverse Laplace transform of one over S minus three times the inverse Laplace transform of one over S minus one plus five half the inverse Laplace transform of one over S minus three. Right? So what is the inverse Laplace transform of one over S? Yes? One. Yes, can you say the back of paper, please? So you have one half of the function one, which is one half. So what is the inverse Laplace transform of one over s minus one? Yes? E to the t. Yes, can you sign the back of paper, please? So you have e to the t. And what is the inverse Laplace transform of one over s minus two? Yes? Yes, can you sign the back of paper, please? Plus one, uh, two half of e to the t. Right? So after you split it, it's going to be easy because you are going to use only the, uh, the table, right? Um, so in this case, um, you have one half the inverse Laplace transform of one over s minus three, um, the inverse Laplace transform of one over s minus one, plus five half of the inverse Laplace transform of one over s minus two, right? So the inverse Laplace transform of one over s is one, the inverse Laplace transform of one over s minus one is e to the t, and the inverse Laplace transform of uh, one over s minus two is e to the two t. Good. Right. So, uh, right. So now let us go to another example.
Right. So uh, uh, for this Laplace transform, how can we factorize this function? Right? Okay. So you have to map this into the function that you already know in the first Laplace transform. So what kind of Laplace transform that you guess it should be? What formula? What is the closest Laplace transform that you know to this form? But with the sinus, there should be something else. So did Katie draw to you this formula? So you have the input, the Laplace transform is right to sinus bt will be b over s minus i square plus b square. Laplace transform of b to i t cosinus of bt s minus i over s minus i square plus b square. Did Katie wrote this formula for you? Right. So this is the formula that we want uh, to apply to this case, right? Because you see that for the two formula here, you have a, a second order um, a quadratic form, s minus i square plus b square, and s square minus six, uh, s plus 13 is also a quadratic form, right? So this should be the kind of formula that you need, right? So this is the quadratic forms. Right? So, yes? Uh, could we complete the square yes. on that one to get it to look like the cosine? Yes, can you say the back paper? Yes, so this is uh, uh, the good idea, right? So you observe that s squared minus 6s plus 13 is a quadratic form, and s minus a squared plus b squared is also a quadratic form. Uh, you want to use this formula, which means that you have to complete the square here. square minus 6s plus 13 can be, yes? 6s minus 3 plus 13. Yes, inside the paper, please. So this gives you s square minus 2 times 3, s plus 3 square plus 4, right? Now you have to complete the square for this quadratic form. You have s square minus 6s plus 13, and, 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 I can write s squared minus 6s as s squared minus 2 times 3s plus 3 squared plus 4. Right. And this gives me s minus 3 squared plus 4. Right. So there's a middle step. So you have 3 times 2s plus 9 plus 4. Um, I explain again. <coughs> because in the formula that we have here, we have a square. But this is a quadratic form, and here you also have a quadratic form. So you want to transform this guy into this form. So what you do is that you're gonna complete the square. You have s squared minus six s is s squared minus two times three s. I'm gonna add a nine, and and um, and then there's a left a four left. So this gives you s squared minus two times three times s plus three square plus four, and this is s minus three square plus four, right? Questions? Uh, so in this case, what is A and B? Yes? A is 3 and B is 2. Yes, can you sign the back of paper, please? A is 3 and B is 2. Right. 
So basically, uh, so in order to use these two formula, I want to write this as the sum of this guy and this guy, right? Uh, so, so we write. Three uh, s minus seventeen over uh, s squared minus six s plus seven uh, thirteen, which is three s minus seventeen over s minus three square plus three square, and this is equal to c c one times b, which is two over s minus 3 squared plus 2 squared plus c2 over 2 uh, over s minus 3 over s minus 3 squared plus 2 squared. Right? So what you do is that you plug a to be 3 here and b to be 2. And you try to write this form as a sum of the two functions that we here have over there. So you write 3s minus 7 over s minus 3 squared plus 2 squared is c1 times 2 over s minus 3 squared plus 2 squared plus c2 times s minus 3 over s minus 3 squared plus 2 squared. Right? It's clear. And you have to find c1 and c2. How do you uh, find c1 and c2? Yes? Yes. Can you sign the back of paper, please? Um, so first, you have um, to identify this with two c one plus c two s minus three, right? So s three s minus seven is two c one plus c two s minus three, right? So first thing that you have to identify three s minus seven with two c one plus c two s minus three, and now you're gonna set n to be three. Alright? When you say that to be 3, you're going to have 3 times 3 minus 7 is equal to 2 times c1 plus c2, 3 minus 3. So what is the value of c1 in this case? Yes? 4. Yes. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? Uh, so this, is, uh, this goes away. So what I have is minus 8 is 2 C1, C1 is minus 4. All right, so in this case, uh, after you identify uh, 3S minus 17, with 2c1 plus c2 s minus 3, um, you can set s to be 3 and you can find c1 is minus 4. So what is the value of c2? Yes? No, it's, it's, uh, no, it's not 17 over 3. You plug it here, so c2 is c2 oh, 3. No. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? So now you plug C2 to be minus 4 there. You have minus, uh, 3s minus 17 is minus 8 plus C2s minus 3. All right, so which means that s minus 9 is C2s minus 3. So 3s minus 3 is C2s minus 3, which means that C2 is 3. Right? Questions? Right, so of course in this case, uh, you cannot set S to be anything to find C2 uh, directly. You have to plug the value of C1 into the uh, equation. So when you plug uh, mm -hmm. uh, minus 4 into the equation, you obtain that C2 is 3. Mm -hmm. right, so basically you can write 3 S minus 17 over S squared minus 16 plus 13 
and this is equal to minus 8 minus 4 uh, 2 times s minus 3 squared plus 2 squared and then plus 3 s minus 3 over s minus 3 squared plus 2 squared right so this is the splitting that you need all right now this is the uh, so so after having the splitting you want to apply the uh, the inverse Laplace transform there. So you have the inverse Laplace transform of 3x minus 17 over s squared plus minus 6s minus plus 13. And this is equal to minus s, the inverse Laplace transform of 2 over s minus 3 squared plus 2 squared plus 3, the inverse Laplace transform of s minus 3 over s minus 3 squared plus 2 squared. Right? So what is the inverse Laplace transform of the first guy? Yes? Yes, can you sign at the bank of paper? It's a 2T. So this gives you minus 4 e to the 2t um, sinus of 3t, right? And what is the inverse Laplace transform of the second guy? Yes? Uh, e to the 3t. Sign the bank of paper, please. And what is the inverse Laplace transform of the second guy? Yes? Uh, it would be plus 3e to the 3t cosine of 3t. Yes, can you sign the bank of paper, please? So here you have 3 times e to the 3t cosine of 2t. Right? Alright? But just, so basically, in, the, in order to find an inverse Laplace transform of any function, you just split it into uh, smaller pieces that you know uh, the inverse Laplace transform of those things. So let us go to another example. So, I have to split f into the sum of something. So what is this something? Yes? Uh, well, the second term in the denominator will have imaginary solutions. So are you allowed to split it up into a uh, set sum? No. Can you sign the bank of paper, please? So here you have two terms, which is s minus 5 and s squared uh, plus 4. So what you do is you split it like a or s minus 5, right? So this is one term. Another term is p times s over uh, s squared plus 4. And another term is 1 over s squared plus 4. 
successful. Right? Uh, so, so n minus phi is order one. What you need is just a of n minus five. N squared plus four is of order two. So what you need is is a guy of order zero, which is c times one of n squared plus four, and a guy of order one, which is b times x of n squared plus four. This is the form that we need. All right. So we now we have to find a b c. Right. So you have x minus eight over x minus five square plus 4 is a times a square plus 4 plus b times s s minus 5 plus c times s minus 5 over s minus 5 s square plus 4 right. so I spread again so in this uh, expression you have s minus 5 and s square plus 4 so the first term you have should be a of s minus five. This is clear. The next term, you cannot factorize s squared plus four into the product of two uh, polynomial of order one. So you have to keep s squared plus four. But in order to keep s squared plus four, I have to consider two terms. The first term is, is with respect to a constant. This is order zero, because s squared plus four is order two. And the next term will be something of order one. So this is s, right? Um, which, so after I uh, have this form, now I have x minus a will be a times x squared plus 4 plus b times s, s minus 5, all right, uh, plus c times s minus 5. So how can I find uh, the first guy, a? Yes? Yeah, I can the yes, can you sign the back of paper, please? So now I set S to be 5. Um, so when I set S to be 5, I have 5 minus 8. It's 8 times 5 squared plus 4. Plus B times 5, 5 minus 5. Plus C times 5 minus 5. Right? To find A, I set S to be 5. So when I set S to be 5, I have s minus a, the 5 minus a, a 5 squared plus 4 plus b times 5, 5 minus 1 plus c times 5 minus 5. Right? So what is a? Yes? Yes, can you send back the paper, please? So this guy goes away, this guy has to go away. Uh, um, so I have s to be um, uh, minus 3, a times 29. So a is minus 3 over 29. Is it good? Right. So, so, um, so how can I find the other terms? Yes? You can say uh, s equals b0, which we know is b0. Right, right. Can you sign the back of paper, please? So now what I do is I set s with 0, right? So set S to be zero. So uh, you're gonna have zero minus eight is minus three over twenty-nine. Zero squared plus four plus b times zero. Zero minus five plus c times zero minus five. So uh, in order to find uh, C, I set S to be zero, right? So now I have zero minus eight, is uh, minus three over nine, uh, zero squared plus four <coughs> plus three times this guy, but this guy is zero. And so I have minus eight is equal to minus 12 over 29, uh, minus 5C. So 5C will be 8 minus 12 over 29. So can I uh, 2, 7, 16, uh, 3 minus 12, 2, 2, 0. And this is minus, uh, this is 2, 2, 0 over 29, right? So C 
will be? 220 divided by 5, 4, 4 over 29. Right? I explain again. So to find C, what you do is that you uh, set, uh, uh, you set uh, uh, S to be 0. So when S uh, is 0, this V goes away. Um, so you have 0 minus A is minus 3 over 29 0 squared plus 4 plus C 0 minus 5. Then I have minus A is minus 5 over 29 minus 5 uh, C, which means that 5 C is 8 minus 5 over 29, which is 2 to 0 over 29. All right? Uh, which means C this is 4, 44 over 29. So basically, I have S minus 8 is... Uh, minus 3 over 29 s squared plus 4 plus b s s minus 5 plus 44 over 29 times s minus 5 right so how can I find b So what is B? Um, so B would be negative uh, 3 over 29. 3 over 29, there's no negative. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, and my paper is. Right, yes? I just had a question. Uh, can you basically set the value of S to whatever you wanted and then solve it out? No, you have to set S so that you have some advantage, right? Okay. So why, why do we have why, why do we have right. S? Right, I get why we did it in the other situations. I was just thinking. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Can you send a back of this? But in this case, it is easier than that because you can yeah, you can look at this term, you see that B S S minus five is B S square B S square minus five S uh, B, right? Right. Yeah. So now you look into this guy, you see that okay on the right hand side you don't have S square. On the left hand side you have S square and S square, which means that this B has to be cancelled by this uh, minus 3 over 29, right? So this guy and this guy, they cancel, right? So which means that B has to be equal to 3 over 29. So we see that, um, we see that on the left hand side, there is no S square, right? On the left hand side, there is no S square. On the right hand side, the right hand side, there is minus 3 over 29 S square plus B S square, right? You see that on the left hand side there's no S square, but on the right hand side, right hand side you have minus three over 29 S square plus B S square, which means that this guy has to be zero, right? So B is equal to three over 29. So that this guy is zero. So that this term Right. So finally, finally, the form that I have from the beginning is what is uh, mm, Fs will be um, minus three over twenty nine of one over s minus five plus uh, b times three over twenty nine s over s squared plus four plus four fifty four over twenty nine. 
1 over s square plus 1. Right. It's clear? I explain again. So after you, uh, you find uh, a and c, uh, the b is, is, is obvious because on the left hand side you don't have s square, on the lower right hand side you have minus 9, uh, minus 3 over 29 s square and b s square. So which means that this term has to be 0. Uh, so then you, you know right away that uh, b is 3 over 29 and the formula that you have is <coughs> Now I'm going to apply the inverse Laplace transform. on both sides. So what is the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 5? Yes? Uh, e to the 5t. Yes, inside the back of this. So the first guy gives you e to the 5t. e to the 5t. What is the inverse Laplace transform of the second guy? Yes? Can you decide the place of this? So the second guy is the inverse Laplace transform of the second guy is cosine of 2t. What is the inverse Laplace transform of the last guy? Can you say the bank of paper, please? This is my answer, right? So I have to put the 2 here so that I have the sinus of 2t, right? So basically, I have 22 over 29 sinus of 2t. Watch us. Right, so for the last one, for the last one, you have sinus of 2t, but you have to take a factor 2 outside of the 44. So here I have two, 22, here I have 2 over s squared plus 4, and the inverse Laplace transform of 2 over s squared plus 4 is sinus 2t. Questions? We still have one minute, right? Um, so let us do a little bit more. Right? How do you want to finish soon? We have one minute. So let, let us do one more exercise. Um, <laughs> Any questions on this exercise? Yes? Um, could you explain why you put a 2 on the top of the, the right. C portion? Right. So here you have what? Here you have 44 over 29. Um, and this is 1 over S squared plus 4, right? But you know that, okay, the inverse Laplace transform of 2 over S squared plus 4 sinus of 2t, right? And you want to use this formula. So, so you have to put 2 here, all right? And you have to subtract, you have to divide 2 here, right? It's good? I, I just don't understand why you're multiplying but then dividing to their, like why are you dividing by 2 when you're multiplying by 2? Uh, no, I don't divide. So here I have 44. Over 29, right? So here I have what? I have um, I have uh, 22 over 29 times 2 inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared plus 4, right? I put these two inside, and I have 2 over s squared plus 4. Right. Okay, so it's finished.